Hello, friends, and welcome to episode 1,273 of the Juice Box Podcast. Today's episode is an after dark with a person we're going to be calling Wilfred. There's so much in here that makes this an after dark, I don't know how to introduce it. I'm just going to scan my notes and tell you that I see the words traumatic interaction at the hospital, bipolar, cocaine, crack, and I don't even know a way to say this. His grandfather made a pass at him when he was... uh, Okay, just listen or don't, but I mean, I would if I was you. Those uh, people paying to subscribe on Apple Podcasts are getting this episode today with all the curse words in it, so... You should check that out. Please don't forget that nothing you hear on the Juice Box podcast should be considered advice, medical or otherwise. Always consult a physician before making any changes to your healthcare plan or becoming bold with insulin. If you're living with type 1 diabetes, the After Dark collection from the Juice Box podcast is the only place to hear the stories that no one else talks about. From drugs to depression, self-harm, trauma, addiction, and so much more. The episode you're about to listen to was sponsored by Touched by Type 1. Go check them out right now on Facebook, Instagram, and of course, at touchedbytype1.org. Check out that Programs tab when you get to the website to see all the great things that they're doing for people living with type 1 diabetes. touchedbytype1.org. This episode of the Juice Box Podcast is sponsored by the Dexcom G7, the same CGM that my daughter wears. Check it out now at Dexcom.com slash Juicebox. Today's episode is sponsored by Medtronic Diabetes, a company that's bringing people together to redefine what it means to live with diabetes. Later in this episode, I'll be speaking with Jalen. He was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes at 14. He's 29 now. He's going to tell you a little bit about his story. To hear more stories with Medtronic champions, Go to MedtronicDiabetes.com slash Juicebox or search the hashtag MedtronicChampion on your favorite social media platform. All right. Well, you're being recorded now. Do you want me to introduce you? Would it be easier? Or can you do it without saying your name? Oh, I don't mind. Go ahead. I am. I'm going to go by Wilford Brimley because I think it's hilarious and I don't care. <laughs> it's, I grew up in the 90s. Anyways, I am the father of a type 1 diabetic who was diagnosed October of last year or i guess two years ago so about a year in a few months now he's been diagnosed okay wilford that's good do you really want me to call you that (laughs) i don't care what you call me (laughs) but i just think growing up in the 90s like ever since he was diagnosed i was like i'm gonna get a tattoo of that because it kind of makes me laugh (laughs) do you have type one no he does my son just your son okay so and your son was diagnosed recently in the last couple years yes okay is he, or do we want to keep his age like vague or do you want to? He's four years old right now. Oh, okay. So he's a little kid when he was diagnosed, like two, maybe. Yeah. Oh, it right. was just after his second birthday. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Oh, it was miserable. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I actually didn't think anything was like, I'm a stay at home dad. I am around him all the time. I didn't notice the weight loss and stuff like that. And my wife was like, you know, his eyes look sunken in. He doesn't look good. He was always fussy. All right, I might cry. (laughs) But uh, I didn't think anything of it. We called my mother-in-law, who is also in the medical field, as is my wife. And she was like, you should take him to urgent care. And we did because he was breathing. He was having the Kuzma respirations, Yeah, which I didn't know what they were. I was like, oh, whatever. He's going to get over this overnight. But we took him in and the urgent care doctor was just very nonchalant like... I can't tell you here, but you need to go to the hospital. Okay. I was like, okay, well, my wife has work in about two hours. So I don't know. So I was like, she works at a hospital. So I was going to go to her hospital with him. And I went and picked her up, even though he was like, you should probably go straight there. I was like, I went and picked her up and took her to work thinking nothing of it. Mm -hmm. And I was on my way to her hospital. She said, I don't think we should go to my hospital. You should drop me off and you should go to another hospital that's a little bit further away but they have a they have a peds unit i dropped her off i went there they could not get the uh, iv in after 
we were admitted. This is the part that's going to make me cry because I was like holding him down trying to while he was screaming. Mm-hmm. Sorry. No, you're okay. You know, they poked him like, God, 12, 13 times trying to get an IV in because his blood was like syrup. And finally they got one and they did a bunch of tests. And this is what, I don't want to say it pisses me off or I don't know how it makes me feel. But the doctor comes in after I'm like, I'm just sitting there holding him as he's like, you know, I don't know what the hell is going on. He just drank juice for God's sake. They just gave him juice and he comes in, he goes, well, it's a good thing you brought him in. He has diabetes. And he turns around and walks away. And I'm like, uh, what? Like walked out of the room away? Yes. Just literally turned around and walked away. Oh, jeez. I was like, okay. I don't know. I didn't know what that meant at that point. Right. Like, I texted my parents and my wife and I said what happened. And my wife knew more than me. And she was like, okay. She called in her coworker to come take over for her so she could come to where I was. So she got a ride from one of her other coworkers and another coworker took over for her. Like, just very luckily, because I was like, no, just stay at work. It's fine. Like, I I didn't think it was a big deal. Like, we were being admitted, but I didn't know that. I thought it was like, he has diabetes. They're going to take care of him tonight. And then tomorrow we'll go home and he's going to take like a shot a day or something. And right. we have to check his blood sugar maybe like a few times a day. Like, I didn't know anything about it. Yeah, sure. I understand. And my wife was like, I'm coming to the hospital. And I'm like, I don't think you should. Like, we need the money. We're not we're not rich. Like we're about to have another hospital bill to just stay at work. And she's like, no, this is a bigger deal than you think it is. Oh, okay. Mm. And she's right. I had no fucking clue. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it sucks. The doctor walked in and dropped something on you like that with no context and wandered out again. That's yeah. Yeah. Just, just <laughs> left me. in. I think it was like what felt like an hour was probably like two minutes. And then the nurse in the pediatric unit came down and here she had a wheelchair. I started to put him in and she goes, no, you, this is for you. I was like, okay, oh, oh, great. Now I'm the problem. <laughs> I'm looking woozy. Yeah, apparently. Yeah. Cause... Listen, I feel weird calling you Wilford, but if it makes you yeah, feel, no. <laughs> it makes you feel any better, you're in the middle of this you can, touching. You can just call me whatever you want. In the middle of this touching story, I'm going to break in. I'm like, oh, am I going to say Wilford? I'm not going to do that. When Arden was diagnosed in that hospital room, you know, yeah. I felt like, I don't know if anybody can, can uh, relate to this, but I felt like the fibers inside of my chest were being torn apart. Like I was being stabbed by tiny knives from the inside out in my chest. Like, yeah, the, yeah that, that's what it felt like. So, you know, it's understandable to be emotional and to be you know needing a wheelchair because i like i did everything i could not to cry in front of her you know what i mean the dexcom cgm is sponsoring this episode of the juice box podcast and did you know the dexcom cgm is widely covered and most patients pay 20 dollars or less per month the dexcom g7 is easy to get no matter your cgm coverage head to my link right now dexcom.com slash juice box check out all the information But scroll down to that spot where it says get a free benefits check to see if you can get started today. The Dexcom G7 features a lightning fast 30 minute warm up. So you'll have more time with your numbers. And it also has a new 12 hour grace period so you can swap your sensor when it's convenient for you. The follow app allows for 10 followers. That's 10 loved ones who can keep an eye on you if you want. Don't forget the Clarity app to keep track of your potential A1C and your time and range. These alerts are going to help you to stay on track because the Dexcom G7 can alert you up to 20 minutes before you go low or when your glucose is too high. You can even personalize your alerts. Enjoy greater peace of mind with the Dexcom G7. Use my link, dexcom.com slash juicebox to find out more. This episode is sponsored by Medtronic Diabetes. MedtronicDiabetes.com slash juice box and now we're going to hear from medtronic champion jalen i was going straight into high school so it was a summer heading into high school was that particularly difficult unimaginable you know i missed my entire summer so i went i was going to a brand new school i was around a bunch of new people that i had not been going to school with so it was hard trying to balance that while also explaining to people what type 1 diabetes was my hometown did not have an endocrinologist So I was traveling over an hour to the nearest endocrinologist for children. So, you know, 
outside of that, I didn't have any type of support in my hometown. Did you try to explain to people or did you find it easier just to stay private? I honestly, I just held back. I, I didn't really like talking about it. It was just, it felt like it was just a repeating record where I was saying things and people weren't understanding it. And I also was still in the process of learning it. So I just kept it to myself, didn't really talk about it. Did you eventually find people in real life that you could confide in? I never really got the experience until after getting to college. And then once I graduated college, it's all I see. You know, you can easily search Medtronic champions. You see people that pop up and you're like, wow, look at all this content. And I think that's something that motivates me. I started embracing more, you know, how I live with type 1 diabetes. I wasn't emotional about the diabetes at that point because I didn't, I didn't really know anything. I thought it was fine. I was emotional because they were like, you know, they had an IV team in there and they were holding like forcefully. They were talking about bringing in a uh, uh, restraint table. Oh, really? They were, yeah, they were talking about bringing in a restraint table because they couldn't get an IV. And I'm sitting there as his dad trying to hold him. Yeah. And he's he's a strong little, he's so strong. Mm-hmm. They were like, even the, the IV team was like, literally, we've never had a toddler this strong. And they've got like 12 people around him. I'm holding him. And then after that, I was fine. I was like, oh, he's just got, he's got diabetes. We'll figure this out. I'm traumatized from what just happened, but we're going to, this is going to be easy. And then we went, you know, I won't give my location away too much, but we did go to the Barbara Davis Center. And that's when I really was like, I learned about it. (laughs) It's like a ton of bricks just falls on your fucking chest. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, all all the information keeps coming and coming, and it's it's more and more overwhelming. Then you start putting the pieces together about like short term and long term health concerns. Yeah, that was the first time my wife was like the the strong one, and I was bawling my eyes out. And she's just like, "I'll get the information. We're gonna figure this out." And <laughs> yeah, yeah, she she was strong for me, thankfully. Well, it's wonderful. Yeah, and uh, let's see. And you were a stay at home dad. Yeah, and I yeah, and I am. I wasn't planning on being one for this long, but after he was diagnosed and my wife was pregnant when he was diagnosed. So once he was diagnosed, we made the decision that it's I'm just gonna continue doing this until they're both in school full time. So I got at least another six years of this. <laughs> you uh, you and I have a lot in common there. Yep. I did not think I was gonna be a stay at home father as long as I was either. That was definitely not the plan. Yep. And then this all happened and we we're like, okay. I guess I should it stay. It's a little bit depressing yeah. being yeah. a stay-at-home dad. Be like you, you know, it's just, just lack of adult interaction is. Ugh, it eats a it eats this, yeah. You have trouble with it? Yeah, yeah. I've got severe social anxiety. I would call it. <laughs> I like literally can't even take my kids to the park if I don't smoke some weed. So I'm a I'm a recreational marijuana user. How does the social anxiety present? Like what happens if you try to go out? Oh God, I don't, I just don't even try because my mind is like, well, you know, what's, you know, it just imagines just like, I don't know. Like every time I think about going out and I haven't had any sort of like weed, I'm like, this is just bad. Um, Somebody's going to want to talk to me. I don't want to talk to them. I want to go on a hike with my kids and I don't want to talk to anybody, but so there's always people on the trail and most of those people are friendly and I want to be friendly, but I really don't want to talk to people. Mm-hmm. So if I smoke a little bit of weed, it kind of helps. So tell me about, I want to be friendly, but I don't want to. Like, I'm not going to be mean to you. And so I'm not trying to say that I'm going to be mean to somebody, but I, if I don't know, I don't like talking to people. <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay. What? Well, you're talking to me. Are you having trouble now? Not so much, but are you high? Oh yeah. Oh, Okay. <laughs> Okay. It makes me more social. I don't like I don't like talking to people. If I'm like myself, I'm like very withdrawn. I just want to be with my family, just with my kids. Mm-hmm. Like that's it. I don't want anybody else around, including extended family. Like <laughs> Did you have that going on as a child? Uh not so much. I think it kind of started in my late teens probably. I got I just was like kind of got fed up with people. Like I started to realize how much the world is kind of not as awesome as they want you to think it is when you're growing up. Did something happen specifically? I don't know. A lot of stuff. Like Uh, family trouble or money? or you know, my mom has been gone since I was like four. Did she get lost or did she leave on purpose? 
she has her own addiction problems, as do pretty much me and all of my brothers, which I'm the only one who acknowledges that I have one. So it's kind of funny. Every All of my brothers are in the same boat as me, but they're like, I'm fine. And I'm like, no, you're not, dude. <laughs> but yeah, so we all have that problem. My mom has been pretty much out of my life since I was apparently six, but I really don't have any memories of her at all. So the, my earliest memory of her, I think, is when I was like nine or ten, maybe. I see. What was her addiction? Right now, it's currently crack is the new one. <laughs> oh. Yeah. So it started off with alcohol, then, you know, cocaine. And then I made the decision to live with her when I was like 19. I was like, well, she likes to drink and smoke. Like, I'm like that. I like to drink and smoke. I went to live with her. and I was like, she is not. She is way. She's off the deep end. Like, she's. She's professional. She's also bipolar. So, oh, okay. you know, if you want to get into the uh, other autoimmune things in the family that's definitely one of them that runs in mine so your mom's bipolar she started yep. with booze went to coke <laughs> currently doing crack how old is she 60 wow look at her going 60 older than that maybe okay. i don't i don't actually know uh but she's in her 60s does she hold a job and has she no she's never held a job uh she has had jobs but she has you know she six weeks or something you know she loses it do you think she has that anxiety about going out in public oh yes definitely okay and i'm wondering like if she's diagnosed bipolar i'm not definitely could see a not not as severe as my mom but i could see i might have some sort of you know something a little something i don't know if there's degrees to bipolarness or not a touch but. of the bipolar perhaps <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah okay yeah <laughs> do you my, my brother definitely does, but whatever. We don't need to get into that. <laughs> right. But so you have brothers who all have different addiction issues? Yes. How about your father? Is he just in a corner crying? What's going on there? Oh, 100%. Yeah. Yes. My father is a saint. My dad is the, I don't, I don't know if I were him, I would not be alive. That's for sure. I, <laughs> I offed myself years ago. I don't know how he puts up with us. And he says I'm the best one, so whatever. I'm cool with that. It feels like we've set a low bar, but I, I hear what you're saying. Exactly. <laughs> it's a very low bar that I am. Hey, remember right your now. crack mom. Yeah, yeah, no, you're doing way better than her. Thank you, Dad. Exactly. Yeah, 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 I appreciate it. I'm just overreaching. Uh, but yep. But your dad doesn't have any addiction issues? No, no, my dad is, that side of the family is 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 very clean. Uh, you know, he's a preacher's son, so. How do you end up with your mom? church <laughs> that's hilarious yeah we don't want to get into the, my feelings on religion no, but, but i love that your dad's at, at church as a young man all like earnest and everything and your mom's there like i hope i can get these demons out of my head and he's like that girl's pretty <laughs> like here we go my god well what a match okay so yeah. uh and how many how many siblings do you have like you're one of how many i am one of one of four okay is there any type one in there there is not any type one on my side. On my wife's, my wife has some distant cousins that are type one. Okay. Her uh, dad is type two. Uh, my mom has the bipolar. Her uncle has the bipolar. Yeah, that's about it. Oh, and she's also PCOS. She has PCOS. Okay. That's a lot. I'm processing. Sorry. Yeah. Also, I'm trying to stop from asking you like how close to like that Dave Chappelle character is your mom, but I don't want to do that. So I haven't seen her in a very long time, but my brother said it's pretty bad. No kidding. Like really like <laughs> just strung out. Terrible. Yeah. That's, yeah. I, I, well, listen, first of all, I'm sorry. That sucks. It's like, okay. I, you know, yeah, honestly, I, I don't, eh. I appreciate that. This has your, been your situation for a long time, but still it's your mom. And yeah. you know, you could have got like a different mom and you, maybe wouldn't have to go through some of this. So it sucks. Yeah. Well, I know. got an awesome stepmom now. So nice. Oh, your dad didn't strike out the second time. Oh no. My dad, my dad did good. He did we good. ran off a few girlfriends and then we decided on one we liked. And he was like, are you sure? We were like, yeah, we're not going to run this one off. <laughs> your boys decided she could, he could keep that one. <laughs> like you're allowed to stay lady. Like, okay, great. <laughs> it's a, it actually happened. There were, there were meetings in the bedrooms of like, all right, how are we going to run this one off? By the way, what a lottery winner she is. It's stuck, yeah. with you, stuck with you guys. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. She, uh, I won't get too far into it, but she was, she was, uh, 
her profession lends to. She's a lion lends tamer. To, lends to it. No, no. Not, <laughs> not so much. But I, I think she knew what she was getting into because she's seen it. So I say we might we might not be as bad as what she's probably seen in her profession. I say in her profession, she locks down nuclear um, explosion sites. Is that what she? Oh yeah. no, she deals with <laughs> mental health. Uh, no, family matters. Oh, I see. <laughs> Family matters. Not the TV show with Urkel. Yeah, right. exactly. Okay, she wasn't a producer on that or anything. We'll say divorce court. <laughs> oh, gotcha. All right. Oh, so yeah. she. Yeah, you know, I see what you're saying. Okay. So you have what you have going on, and this is before the kids even. Like your wife and you, like go out. Yeah. You smoke a little. She knows that's going to happen. That kind of stuff. Yeah, and my wife doesn't smoke, but she's a proponent of me smoking. If I'm at, if I'm get irritated or something, she's like, "Go take a hit real quick." <laughs> Like, okay. Do you actually smoke or do you like, like dry vape or how do you do it? No, I, I smoke out of a bong. I just basically take one big uh, bowl every two or three hours. And that keeps you okay. Yep. You're not worried about the bipolar thing and the, the weed smoking and stuff like that. Oh no. Okay. I think the, you know, my wife keeps me in check. I if if I was ever to be worried about, then she would. She'd be there. I'm, I'm very lucky in that aspect. Can I ask, what's the T, uh, THC level of the weed you smoke? Do you know it? Like what percent it is? I mean, like uh, between 18 and 30. Okay. 30. Okay. <laughs> the 30 shut you off pretty good or no? Oh, I mean, I've been smoking since I was 18. So not really. Yeah. Oh, I guess about 17. So I, and it's a daily thing. So I've got a pretty high tolerance. Okay. Now those people who smoke that oil and stuff, I kind of, I've done that, and the dabs, I like it. it I'm not going to say it puts me in the couch or anything like that, but it's it's not any. I don't enjoy it as much as the flower. Okay. Is that, was that called dabs? Is that what they are? Yeah, I think. That, yeah, that's yeah. what they call them. Gotcha. I bring up every time somebody brings that up. Like there were the kids running around dabbing all the time, and like I somebody said to me one time, like, do you think their parents know that the thing they're doing is mimicking the cough from when you? dab and i was like i bet you they don't (laughs) i bet you they don't so okay so the weed helps you how is the weed now that it's legal is it better or worse oh it's so much better consistent it's yeah the the consistency is is what's what's better okay you know it's not you're not getting a brick and (laughs) breaking out steeds and stems like the horrors you had to grow up with not smoking out of a coke can pipes are very accessible (laughs) Now, in your note to me, funny, you don't mention weed in your note to me. Do you oh, know- yeah, I know, because I have also have an alcohol problem. Okay. I also have an alcohol problem. Are you, would you consider yourself an alcoholic? Yes, 100%. I, well, an addict, which is, you know, when people are like distinctive about alcoholic. If you are addicted to something, you're an addict. So you're, I'm an addict. That's how you think of yourself. Like there are certain things you do, you're going to get stuck to it. Yep. All right. So are you drinking currently? Uh, Yes. Okay. So I wasn't when I signed up for the, this, I was doing really good. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to go on and have it. And I was like, and then, you know, things happen. <laughs> well, how old were you when you started drinking? I didn't start drinking until I was 20. Oh, okay. I was actually, believe it or not, um, when I, before I was 17, I was the goody goody of the family. Like, you know, just, I always had a girlfriend, did good in school. I would call my dad and say, hey, my brothers are smoking weed out back because I wanted them to leave so that I could have the house with my girlfriend. You know, I was a tattletale back then. And then my long term girlfriend broke up with me. And my brother was like, hey, man, hit this. Did you tattle to get tail? Is that what you're saying to me? That's exactly what I'm saying. That's what I thought you were saying. Okay, so um, I wanted to make sure you were like, I'm going to say they were smoking weed so they get out of the house so I can have the house to myself. I didn't think it was to make popcorn and watch a movie. I wasn't sure. (laughs) So you don't start drink. You you smoking weed for two years before you're drinking. Yeah. Okay. And I was doing really good in those two years. Held down a job was was great. And then I decided I wanted to start traveling, I guess, at that point. And that's when I really just like kind of hit the went off the rails. Uh, actually, I forget about the year or two before that where I lived with a heroin addict. <laughs> Wait, w- was that a, a roommate or a, a partner? That was a best friend from childhood who is still my best friend today and he's clean and sober. But yeah, he was probably the worst addict I've ever met. But I, I 
moved out of my parents' house because I was smoking weed. I had a job and my parents were like, well, you can't smoke weed here. And I was like, eh, I'll just go live with my friend Eddie because his parents let him do heroin and <laughs> like whatever. <laughs> his so I went and lived with him. him. Wait, did his parents really let him do heroin? No, like, okay. they didn't let him, but they weren't stopping him. Like, so you, you actually, know? you actually lived in his, in his childhood home with him? Yeah. And I believe I had this like grandiose idea, like I'm taking care of him because when he would like, you know, he OD'd once or twice and I would be, you know, he lived and right. I gave myself credit for that. For, it was like some stupid, like I did something, even though I'm just living, I'm literally just kind of. Look at me. I'm the adult here. I'm handling things, keeping everything upright. Yep. Yeah. He's shooting yep. it or snorting it. Or what was he doing? Shooting it. Oh, jeez. Yeah, I remember he comes to me one time with a fucking syringe. It's got duct tape around the plunger. He's got it lubricated with chapstick, and he's like, I can't get it to push down, and I need your help, man. It's already in the vein. And I'm like, I'll admit I actually tried to help him, and I passed out while trying to help him. Never do that again. Wait, the the process of trying to push on the plunger like made you nauseous? It made me pass out. Made you pass I literally out. was like, in my mind, I was like, what if this kills him? Because like, Cause then I did it. Yep. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I just I just fainted. <laughs> I've had some traumatic moments in my life, I guess you could say. I was gonna say, man, I think I know why you don't want to go outside. <laughs> like so geez, that's I, I don't want to say that's insane because it seems derivative, but that's insane. Um yeah. yeah. You think it's very like wired in you, right? All of this. Yes, it's it's genetic. I definitely believe that it's genetic. I don't know. It also could not because a lot of weird things have happened that could could have put me here. I mean, my grandpa has hit on me before, so that's another thing you could add to the story I'm of sorry. Tra- traumatization. <laughs> Sexually? Your grandfather made an advance yes. towards you? Yes. Okay. Can you tell me what that was? He has Parkinson's for like 16 years before he passed, and I was a caretaker for him. I liked the caretaker role before I fell into alcohol. <laughs> Actually, that caretaker role is probably what, if I look back on it, that's when I really started drinking, like very heavily is when I was taking care of him. It's a lot for a young person. There was one, yeah, there was one time when, you know, he's can't stand up on his own and stuff like that. And I was picking him up and just kind of, I was like, is there anything I can get you before bed? And he He said, just put his arm towards my crotch. And he said, yeah, I want you. And I was like, all right, grandpa, we're going to get you to bed now. This is okay. This is too much. Uh, and you can't tell your family about that because then, you know, your parents are like, they, you don't want your parents to look at their dad that way. Like, you know, you just kind of have to tell your therapist that and your therapist is like, oh, shit. <laughs> you should start doing heroin. No, <laughs> Wait, that's what your therapist said to you? No, that's my that's my go out plan, you know. Oh, oh that's how you're getting out of here. Well, wait yeah, a minute. It looks like fun. So but now, I'm not... After your grandfather says you have a pretty mouth or whatever he said. <laughs> what do you do with that? Like you're 20. I right. Pr- I pro. Yeah, I was. That's ex- yeah. It's approximately how old I was. I just kind of. Did you laugh it off? I told. I told my oldest brother, and that's it. Was he upset? Because he that was he didn't the only on one him? that would understand. He w- he he kind of laughed at me with it. He was like, he was like, dude, Grandpa's old and he's delusional, and there's a lot of things that there's a, there's some there's a lot going on there. There's a lot of things going on on that side of the family. We'll just say there's some suspect that, you know, that marriage might have just been a cover for some homosexuality back in the day. Oh, you think Gram- you think Grandpa took on a lady who is your grandma and made a family to cover his. I mean, they're not too far off on the family tree. Oh, they know that you think they're almost, they're kind of related ish. No, there's like second or third cousins. What? They the- didn't. They claim they didn't know until after they got married. Are you going to say anything that doesn't make me make the face that has me caught between crying and laughing every time you talk? Like everything you say, I go, I I know you can't see me, but my mouth is open. I I stop breathing and I can't decide. Am I going to laugh or be horrified? You can laugh. It's totally fine. Jesus. I really appreciate you coming on the podcast, too. I want to say that. (laughs) Wait, what? I really appreciate you coming on the podcast, by the way. Thank you. I figured I've got something somebody's gone through, but <laughs> I don't know about that one. That one's, I mean, I'm sure it's happened to other people, but my goodness, that's something else. My grandfather yeah. was just like mean. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Mine was the preacher and very nice. He was a, wait, he was a preacher too? He was oh, the yeah. preacher? Yep. Oh, God. Were you giving- <laughs> 
hold on, hold Somebody's on, hold on, hold on, hold like, on. Do I know them? Uh, no, that sounds I'm, familiar. I'm absorbing everything. You you think that sounds familiar? There's a lady on here two months ago said that her preacher father used to go to like bondage and like sadomasochism yeah, dungeons. You heard I that know. one? I love that episode. That was I've heard every episode. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that too. Everybody yeah. should listen to every episode. That okay. All right. I don't know. Are we gonna get to the point here? We are, right? <laughs> so yeah. yeah. I mean, this your backstory is taking a half an hour. I don't feel like we're anywhere near getting through it. But okay. So I but we're gonna talk. <laughs> well, we didn't even get through post diagnosis. <laughs> yeah, we're like your poor kid's still in the hospital in the story. <laughs> like Jesus God. We can um, skip the rest of my childhood trauma. Uh, yeah, right, well, more, well I think we've established who you are and why maybe you're that person. That that's good. Yeah. Um so yeah. you're I mean, you're a would you call yourself a functioning alcoholic or do you do you blackout um, drink? Yeah, no, I'm very high functioning. Oh. I don't blackout. I I don't drink hard liquor unless Unless it's Thursday. I don't know what you're going to say. <laughs> unless there's, you know, unless there's an excuse to sometimes if I'm watching hockey and my wife's not working, you know, then fine. But, you know, I stick to beer 99.9% .9 of the time. You couldn't have an ice cream sandwich while you're watching the hockey game or something like that? Like there would be nothing that could like. It just calms my nerves a little bit when I, and it's, it's sad and I'm, but I'm working on it. My, me and my wife are getting through this together and I'm not. That's what that's really a big thing that I came on here to say is like if somebody else is going through what I'm going through, like don't be silent about it. Because right. I thought for sure I was gonna come clean with my wife about my problem and she was gonna be like, just you know, all right, well, I'm you either gotta go to rehab or you're gonna leave. And she's like, No, we're gonna get through this together. Wait, and wait, I was like Expo how long have you been together? Married? Oh, uh, five years this month. When you get married, does she know you're an addict? Oh, I think she probably did. Yeah. I mean, I told her before the, before we got married, we were, there were some, cause we had our, we had our first son. The Oh, I got you. I was like, what? Before we got married. Cause I know girls, <laughs> so, man, that's a thing. They would go, Oh, look over there. Then they'd leave while you yeah, were looking. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, um, <laughs> no, we knew each other for a while and then she got pregnant and she thought I was going to leave. And I was like, Oh shit. Like I was literally, when I met her, I was living in a van. I, I was living in a cargo van. You like, know, the, you know, the like paint vans, yes. tall paint vans. You the see? ones that pedophiles use to get kids with. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I when I, I met got... her, I was, I had broken up with my ex. I called my dad and been like, I don't have anywhere to live and I can't afford rent, but you know what I could afford if you help me with a down payment. And I got, I ended up getting a van and was living in Florida, just going, I was living behind where I worked and just like showering at the beach, like just doing living life. And then I met her and we were together, for, I don't know, months, not, not a year, but over six months. And I had already basically proposed kind of as a joke because we were together for so long. And I was like, I think this is going to stick. And then she got pregnant and she thought I was going to leave. And I was like, no, like the next day I traded in my van for a minivan. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I wasn't planning on this, but I'm not going to let my, I'm not. Cause she, I was like, you know, what, what, what are your plans? She goes, I'm not getting rid of it. I was like, okay, well then I'm not going to let the kid not have a dad. Like I, like, Can I say something as a public service announcement that you shouldn't take as a judgment at all? This is just for everybody listening. This has nothing to do with you. And, you know, we're going to make two versions of this episode. If you're subscribed right now on Apple Podcasts, you'll hear this unedited. Uh, but if you're not, this a lot of this part's going to probably be beeped out. But um, ladies, this is for me to you. Don't let a boy who lives in a van finish inside of you. There. The, I, there, I've done it. Well, yeah. okay. okay. <laughs> in my own defense, go ahead. She told me that she was in. Fear. She told me. All right, he, he, hold on. Because she Let was, me. she had PCOS. She was working a P. She has PCOS. She was working in like a per diem schedule, so it was all over the place. After we started dating regularly, she kind of got a she got a normal shift at work, not per diem, and she kind of started to regulate. And I started to make jokes like, "You're gonna get." pregnant and she was just like no i'm infertile no I, which we, i know you've talked about people taking glp ones and getting pregnant because they don't think that they can get fertile well i think that's what happened all right <laughs> just I, without the glp one here's another public service announcement this one's for boys boys if girls tell you they can't get <laughs> pregnant don't finish inside of them 
There. I'm just, I don't know how else that I help you all. This is a very simple idea. It was the best thing I ever did. I don't think I'd be alive if, if I, <laughs> well, I'm wait dead a minute. serious though. If you didn't knock this girl up in your van, you're saying you don't think you'd be alive right now? Tell me about that. No. <laughs> no, okay. no. By this, the way, did this... it happen in the van? No, it okay. didn't happen in the van. Pretty sure it was the shower, but. But was the shower behind a Home Depot or something? <laughs> wait, what are you saying? <laughs> It was in her apartment. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Shower is a great place to have sex. Sometimes. It depends on... Eh, sometimes the angle's hard, but yeah. <laughs> well, if it's hard, then the angle's easy. Now, um, <laughs> so see what happened? Like somebody said to me, hey, don't bleep yourself in this one. And everyone's going to be like, is this the guy I'm listening to about diabetes? Um, yeah, they need to shut the front door. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. Anyway. Uh, so be, being serious, so you, you think having a child really helped you yeah definitely tell me about that if my son wasn't born i think i would have gone on i don't know if me and my wife got would have got married i definitely would never have sold my van i was like i had a moped i was driving around you know i was on tinder just getting tail left and right the best way to put it but i settled down when i met her and then she got pregnant and it was done but before that, if she didn't get pregnant, I don't know if we, like, I just think, I don't think she would, I don't think she would have stayed with me is the thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's very honest of you to say. <laughs> I think she would have, she would have left me. I would have gone back to doing my, you know, whatever going. <laughs> I'm certain I'm still married because my wife was like, if I want another kid, I want them to all look the same. That's pretty, <laughs> you know, so <laughs> I'm pretty certain that's why I'm here. Yeah. Plus, I do a good job around the house and stuff like that. But I hear what you're saying. Okay, so, yeah. and, and listen, I think that's very honest and probably not unfair because I don't think there are a lot of ladies running around going, yeah. you know who I want to settle down with? The guy in the van. Do you want to apologize now for ruining her life or no? <laughs> uh, she misses her family. She doesn't miss Florida. It's too yeah. hot down there. Well, Florida's tough. Also, this story has a very Florida man feel to it. Oh, yeah. There, we could go into way more Florida stories, but yeah. Yeah. I, th that's a state where, by the way, now there's a upcoming job industry where people are collecting iguanas off of golf courses. Yes, so, exactly. Yeah. yeah, that shouldn't be a job. Yeah, we quit selling them at the store. I, I worked at a pet store down there and we quit selling them because there were too many. <laughs> people were just walking outside and grabbing one if they wanted one. <laughs> Basically, I don't need to keep an iguana. I can see them outside of my door. I got gotcha. uh, you. Wow, jeez. Yeah, yeah, it's another world. Some parts of Florida, right, are just yep. different. Okay, so you've got this new diagnosis. I'm sorry, is this your first? It's your first child because your wife's pregnant yep. at the time of the diagnosis, right? Yes, first child. Wife is pregnant of probably like I think she's four or five months pregnant when we get the diagnosis. By the way, did you get pregnant the second time on purpose, or was she under the impression it wasn't going to happen again? Oh, we were very, very much on purpose. Okay. We had, we have tried, had been trying for a long time. I see. Uh, a few, couple miscarriages and then. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, last one finally stuck. Okay. Stuck. How, how romantic. Now, yeah. um, so there you are in the hospital. You, you know, you're, you're coping with drinking and, and weed. And now there's this incredible, like. Actually, I wasn't, I wasn't drinking. At that time. Four weeks. For about four weeks. And then he got diagnosed and I think I, it was like two days, you know? Yeah. Anybody in, in recovery will understand how easy it is to fall back in. How, when you weren't drinking, how did you accomplish that? How did you get to that spot? I was, I had, I was very scheduled in what I did. I was going to AA at the time. I should probably get back into that, but you know, right now I'm kind of focused on trying to sleep with a new baby instead of that. So. <laughs> Do you think AA would be valuable for you? I find friends there that I wish I could get out with, but I don't have, uh, like, I don't actually like AA because it's very, you know, you need to find your higher power. And I'm like, you don't, don't want, have, yeah, I found that when I'm my grandfather yeah, yeah, tried to, yeah, yeah. <laughs> thanks. Um, yeah, my, yeah. my higher power is me because I feel like I'm, you know. I, I want to give myself the credit if I do something good. I don't want to give some fictional character in the sky credit for something that I do. Like, Have you tried to... Like, you won't get on a tangent about people who give God credit about shit that doctors do. I don't want to, I don't want to get into that. <laughs> My, I'll tell you what the part about the Super Bowl I hate. It's when somebody <laughs> thanks God. 
that, that that's your that's the hill you're going to die on here for that. <laughs> no, no. Okay. Uh, you know, I did. You know, I was forced to go to church three times a week until I was sixteen. I kind of it bit me bad. They get, like you it. had enough. Yep. All right. Well, but my question about this is like, can you separate yourself from your life for a minute and look at yourself like from a third party perspective? Mm. And like tell yourself like what is it I I think that person should be doing? Yeah. Yeah, that's easy. Is it? Because I know what I should be doing. Yeah. And I know and I'm you know, I'm gonna do it. Cause I don't What are the things? <laughs> mainly to quit drinking and to uh I need to make myself a schedule again mm-hmm. for things to do throughout the day. So I'm not just sitting there because for a long time after the diagnosis and i would still say probably to this day some days i just stare at the sugar pixel or the uh, you know i just i get a little bit obsessed over it it's kind of my new addiction which i i should adopt but i gotta kick the other ones and get this one into high gear although you know how much higher can i go i'm doing pretty good with his with his blood sugar my wife yeah, I don't think, I think if I was where I was at and I wasn't taking care of his diabetes, she'd have left me by now too. She'd have been like, I can take care of two kids as long as one of them doesn't have time. But she relies on me for this, for that aspect of it. Now she's really stuck with you. I got you. I'm, I, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're like, I'm not going anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> I got a place to live. <laughs> so, all right. Wilford's not riding in a van ever again. Now, <laughs> um, Wilford. No, Wilfred's going to get a van again. Yeah, you're going to need one, honestly. Okay, so I'm sorry. So he's diagnosed. This kicks your drinking back in. Is it like, like, do you drink like you smoke? Like you say you smoke like to moderate yourself, but are you? Sometimes, you know, I I enjoy a breakfast beer sometimes, but most of the time I get up, have a coffee, and then I I won't have one till like 11 or noon. And then it's like one every two or three hours. You know what I mean? Like I don't. It's be And it's beer. Yeah. It's, it's Coors Light. I was going to say, are we saying Paps Blue Ribbon or what are we talking about here? It's very, you know, it's very light content. So mm-hmm. it's not like I'm getting blackout drunk, but I'm, I definitely know it's not good for me. I just keep doing it because it's a habit. You know, it's. Do you do a 12 pack a day? Nah. No, no, maybe eight, eight, but on a like on a hockey night. But <laughs> I, I don't drink that fast until hockey starts, and then I have like two during the game, and then I go to bed. Eight beers, six or seven bong hits a day. Yeah. Okay, and you're functioning. You're taking care of the kids. Everything's okay there. Yep. All right, but you believe yourself to be an addict, and you don't think you should be drinking. Hundred percent. Okay. Hundred. It's not well. It's not good for my body. Yeah. No. Well, yeah, I, I didn't think we were up to that part yet, but yeah, 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 <laughs> right, right. But I'm talking about like just being it's, functional for that's, your kids. It's like it's the that's the 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 sad part. I know my wife's probably out there listening. She's in the other room. She's probably listening to me like ha, ha, ha. <laughs> like, whatever. But that's the fucked up part about being an addict is like once you're an addict, like if you start a habit, it's like you don't even want to do it anymore. But it's habit. Yeah. Like, no, I've heard people talk about having addictive natures and they avoid stuff like that and just pour it into other stuff. Because yeah. and because we can listen, it's nice to all sit around and say, you know, what you should do. You should go to therapy and you should stop doing that. Blah, blah. But I mean, in the meantime, you got to live every minute that's that exists. So so you, you you instead of swapping drinking for the diabetes management, you just added it. Yep. OK, so now you have three things you're addicted to. Yes. Is there anything else? Well, you know, I don't I wouldn't call weed an addiction because it's more like a medication for me, I think. Okay. The alcohol is an addiction. Like people who are like, they say they're California sober. Like I I don't want to, no disrespect to those people or whatever, but the people who drink and say they're California sober, I don't, I don't, that's not my version of California sober. Like I thought California sober was just weed. Okay. So maybe it is. Okay. I I thought, I heard somebody say one time that they only have beers and they don't drink liquor and they, so so it's just beer and weed. And I'm like, I don't subscribe to that being actually sober. Listen, if you were eating a milk, a coconut milk yogurt every two hours. I tell you, you had an addiction. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I don't, exactly. yeah, I don't My care. My wife has a shopping addiction. So <laughs> oh, look at you. You're like, yeah, it's been it's enough okay. on me. Let's throw it this way. Now <laughs> that lady's going to make us go broke. Exactly. Have you ever said anything? Uh, once I came back in the house uh, from the front door and I said, Hey, the UPS guy said, can you slow down his back hurts? <laughs> 
<laughs> my wife didn't like that at all. I thought it was hilarious. Also, the UPS guy did not say that, but he looked like he wanted to. <laughs> so um, I, have, I have said something to the Amazon delivery driver before. Yes. yes. Can you stop coming here, please? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, it's the first door, or I was like, second door on the left. <laughs> She's right over there. She's waiting for you. And he goes, and he like, I, I watched him and he went there and he dropped it off. And I was like, yep. Hmm. Does your wife enable you? Like, are you in a codependent relationship? Oh, you know, to a degree, I would say. Can I say something? I don't mean, I'm going to say something because we're speaking very plainly, but I don't mean it pejoratively, but I, if oh, yes, I sir. yeah. Is she fucked up too? Oh no. Well, she, she's your dad on, in this, in this story. Not on, not on the same level. Not on the same. Okay. But she, but, she, but like, is there some, how do I put this? Is you being fucked up? Family dysfunction. Well, is something? you being fucked up comforting to her? Cause it makes her feel better about herself. No, I don't. You don't think I, that's I don't going? Think so. Okay. No. no, she's. If I ever get too out of line, she. <laughs> you know, there's a reason she's the one that works. I guess <laughs> she wears the she's she wears the pants in the in the relationship. Well, I mean, is she is is one of the reasons you're a stay at home dad because of the social anxiety? No, because that's one of the social. Like okay, so if I go to a party, I clam up and I'm in the corner. But if I'm at work and I'm doing something that I'm like making money, like I feel productive. Like I'm for some reason, like I don't need any sort of substance. I, when I work, I'm very social. Well, then do we not think getting you a job is a, is a good idea? Yeah, we do. Okay. It's kind of a hard, we're in a hard position right now. Cause my wife makes decent money. We're in a very expensive area to live. Mm -hmm. The jobs that I could get would not, pay like even for daycare so it's kind of like what about a work from home thing is there something you could get part-time that you do from home that would give you a little bit of like of that good feeling i've thought about that and i've looked into it and i don't know if i'd be able to stay focused i need something that or like you can just do it whenever you want like you don't have to have scheduled hours it's just whenever you want to work you come on and do it and i'm like i that's like what i would need because you know, I got one kid under one and the four-year-old only goes to preschool 10 hours a week so far. So I'm going to sound like I don't understand for a minute. Maybe I don't. Maybe I'm just trying to like help you paint a picture for the people listening who might not understand. But what if I said, just fucking do it? Like, like, oh yeah, be an adult and do it. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, could you, could you push through it or would it cause a different problem? Uh, like, I don't I know if I, would... I don't know if I could like focus on a job you just said, like, I, I have to tell you that every day of my life, I wish I was doing something else. And I don't just mean while I'm making the podcast. I mean, since I've been an adult, I had to go to a sheet metal shop. It was horrible. I fucking did it. I you know, God, I cut lawns for a while. It was horrible. I did it. I had to collect people's debts, which made me feel terrible. Yeah. I fucking did it. Like, do you know what I mean? Like there are days that I come in here and I'm like, oh God, I've got to record all these ads, edit these things together, put them up, call these people, send out these invoices, do this thing here. I got to go pay my taxes. I don't want to do any of that. I do it every day. Like, what's the it, difference? I think it's, it's really my wife's schedule. Like she, so she works overnights and she does 12 hour shifts. And so I'm kind of like during those days, I'm, awake all night and all day because you're trying to be awake for blood sugars in the beginning that's what it was now it's because of of the baby okay but because op5 you know they we get pretty good overnights most of the time great it's the baby really (laughs) like she does not sleep through the night at all Mm -hmm. never has doesn't do it which i'm getting used to but she's almost one oh she'll get there though Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, so you need a, a different schedule. You need some sleep. I mean, yep. The beer thing, I don't know. Like, I don't. I, you know, I, I don't have any like deep insights about. I know you're not a drinker. Uh, alcohol. <laughs> Listen, I know some people who drink exactly like you do. You know what I mean? And they actually ate beers. They you you look like a piker to them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but they're but they're alcoholics for a hundred percent sure. They're functioning alcoholics. Well, me too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, but, but for every one of them that actually makes it through their life, there's a ton of them that don't. And exactly. it still has a lot of impact on personality and 
interpersonal relationships. It's going to it's going to 100 percent fuck your kids up like, oh, yeah, yeah. Growing up the child of an alcoholic is an uh, a legit problem. Yep. Yeah, I don't even because I don't you know, it's not like it doesn't make me I'm not an angry alcoholic or anything. I've never you know, it's, uh, that's not. Yeah, but it's I've not been, that. But I don't even want my kids to just see the habit of it. Like, yeah, but it's uh, not that. There's like a real, there's a real kind of like diagnosable, repeatable thing that happens to like children of alcoholics have certain personalities. Like they don't know oh, yeah. what to expect. They're always on their toes. They think something's going to go wrong. Like that's you know. And then with your background, I don't. I mean, I'm, you seem like a great guy. Like you don't seem like you want to throw that on your kids. So, oh no! Yeah, I mean, could you stop drinking for them? Yeah, hundred. Well, I'm and I'm going to because he's to the age where he's going to start being like, man, you know, he's going to start asking. So I definitely have to for that reason. But yeah. where's I going with that? Got where I was going with that. It's okay. But did we yeah, just hit a pothole? To. What did we just hit a pothole? <laughs> yeah, I had an ADHD moment. Oh. Um. I've heard people call them potholes when you just can't remember what you're doing when you're smoking. My, I'm using my wife's laptop because it's better quality, and she got a notification about something for work tomorrow. <laughs> and you're reading it. It just, try- it just distracted me. I was like, oh, sometimes shit. I'm like, I'm recording, and something pops up in front of me, and I'm like, not now because I read it. Yeah. Shit, now I lost where I'm at, and I'm like, uh, yeah, like I, I have it all turned off, but once in a while, I don't know, it comes back on, and I'm like, uh, crazy. <laughs> okay, so. Like, what stops you from saying, I'm going to stop recording with Scott and I'm going to go throw the beer out and I'm not going to have it anymore? What would happen if you did that? Nothing. I'd get on with my life. Yeah, why not I, do it then? <laughs> habit. Yeah, all right. Well, make a new habit. Yeah, <laughs> like, you're right. Yeah, no, yeah. You're not, you're not yeah. wrong. I no, mean, how, I does will. The, how does the living room look? Could it be clean? I will. Yeah, make a I habit out is- of vacuuming. <laughs> no, my, my house is immaculate all right well oh, then how about outside I don't know about a mag my wife would argue with that in my to my standards it's immaculate. your boy standards i've picked up some things <laughs> but, but I, I i like honestly i'm obviously no sober counselor i don't know i love your therapy they're you're, you're my favorite episodes are the ones when you like almost are a, are, are a therapist for someone <laughs> I like how I yelled at you about 20 minutes ago. I was like, I don't think that's supposed to happen in therapy. No, it is. Is it? Well, yeah. I mean, because, dude, there's a part of me. There's a voice inside of me that wants to be like, just fucking stop it, man. Like, yeah, just, you know, like you're a reasonable, intelligent guy. Like, you, you you understand the whole thing. It almost feels like you're willfully doing it. it. And if it wasn't for the idea that you have addiction issues, I would say just stop. Yeah, you exactly. know. Well, and, you know, you could still say it because I do. And I'm, I, I do plan on it. But if I you, just am, I'm not there right now. But you don't seem like you love the the beer the way. It's not for it's not really for like to get oh, fucked up like you yeah, know you, like some people use it to 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 reach a level and take I, away their anxiety I, or get them a high. You're using the weed for that. Yeah, right. I'm doing it out of habit at this point. <laughs> I mean, man, you make it you make your habit uh, water with ice and like drink one of those every couple of hours or so. Like, seriously, if you think it's that easy to replace, then replace it. Because I think if you remove the beer, you might gain some clarity and then maybe it is, it's, it's mentally not like, you know, cause I'll literally like go to a store and I'll just put it in the cart and not even think about it. Like, Oh, I just, you know, it's habit <laughs> and it's expensive. So <laughs> yeah. the weed is like, I get, I get the smoking the weed for like your anxiety or for stuff like that. But at some point, I mean, you can't hit the, you can't hit that bong constantly all day long. Can you like, I mean, cause those kids are going to get older, but not go to school too. I mean, well, yeah, but I don't yeah, you're not hiding that from them. them, but you're not going to hide oh, yeah, the I, smell of weed from them. Yeah, you do. You, you don't think I walk into your house right now? I'd know you've been smoking today. Unless you go to the cabinet that has it in it. <laughs> you don't think it's in your hair or on you or anything like that? Oh, probably on me. Yeah. But I, I go outside. All right. <laughs> it, I think maybe. Uh, plus, what about smoking? It's not good for you. Yeah. How about just a dry vape pen? Would that give you the same hit? Yeah, I don't, I'm not. I haven't been a fan of those. I've tried the the edibles and I've literally eaten like a thousand milligrams and it just doesn't do anything. Uh, listen, so. <laughs> I've seen some like. I've seen a couple of like hardcore stoners use those, um, those drive, like, I those need, drive I need Joey Diaz to come give me one of his edibles or something. <laughs> you need Joey Diaz. To me. That's a reference. Not many people, or maybe people will get it. I don't know. That's okay. I get all your references. <laughs> <laughs>
I just, I don't know. Like, I mean, like, do you really, like, if you separate yourself from yourself again and you look at yourself, do you think it's going to be okay if I hit a bong all day long for the rest of my life? Yeah, you know, I'm probably not going to for the rest of my life. But the, you know, the weed's good. I try to think of how to explain it. Oh, that's right. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for an explanation because I don't, I, I mean, I don't know that it's right or wrong. I'm just asking what you think. I think weed, I think weed's totally fine, but I definitely don't plan on doing it like I do right now for the rest of my life Mm -hmm. i'm hoping i'll be able to you know figure out how to manage my anxiety better right now i'll just focus on quitting drinking (laughs) yeah do you remember the after dark with the stripper yes and i asked her what she eats and and she said jack and coke and then she qualified it by saying she meant doing coke and drinking jack daniels is basically her diet yep yeah and how she was like oh it's no problem like there's you know you know, I'm good. Like the, the, she, she sounds like you like right now, Yep. Uh, a few months ago, she contacted me to tell me that she stopped. Like she, she's, you know, on the wagon and she didn't realize about, you know, it's a personal message maybe, but she said that being on the podcast really helped her like reevaluate herself. Yeah. You know, kind of hoping what maybe happens here. You, you, I mean, I don't, I'm, I, I, I think I have myself pretty fairly evaluated. <laughs> no, you, you actually, you sound like you do. Um, yeah. it, it's just that at the end of the evaluation, it feels like you're giving me an excuse why it's okay. Yo, no, it's, yeah, I don't think it's, I don't think what I'm doing is okay, but it's, it, it's not good for me, but it's not good for my kids to see. Right. Yeah. And your relationship with your wife and like all that stuff, you know what I mean? Like you have like years to stay together and ignore each other. You don't want to miss that. <laughs> so you're not wrong about that <laughs> do you really want to be high while you're not having sex through your 40s and 50s huh i want to be high when i'm having sex. you want to be present for those moments um, yeah you you scare me because i don't know <laughs> you i'm just here about to, my future sex life i'm just here to scare people that's my job hilarious can you tell me a little bit about like being a pretty consistent day drinker you know smoking weed the way you do and managing diabetes like, so what yeah, you think, said you're doing oh, good honestly, with that. I think How's that going? The reason I'm still doing the self-management the way I'm doing it is I, probably because I'm still, oh, what's it? What is, uh, I'm still going through the steps of grief, I feel like. Mm, no, that's very possible for sure. Like it's been so, it's been over a year, but it's, it's been the hardest year, you know, and I, I'm gotten really good at it. Thanks to your podcast. You know, standard deviation isn't great, but the kid's four. Mm-hmm. He's got a 6.0 A1C, so. Wow, good for you. I'm trying to go lower. I'm, I'm aiming for 5.7. That's when I'm going to be happy. Mm-hmm. He's Omnipod 5? Omnipod 5, Dexcom 6. Yeah, okay. How did you accomplish that? Like, where did that, where did that all start? Like, coming out of the hospital, first couple of months? We left the hospital... We didn't have anything. We were like, they were saying, we're hopeful we're going to get you a Dexcom. And I was like, okay. So it was like, you know, we left the hospital. We were going to go to the BDC three days in a row for training. On the first day, they were like, this is what we're doing today, learning about injections and all that. And then hopefully tomorrow we'll have a Dexcom for you. And they actually had a Dexcom, I think, before we left. They were like, here's a Dexcom. So we had the Dexcom right away, which was great. Had the Omnipod lined up after we, you know, because they're like, do you want T-Slim or Omnipod? Those are the ones that were, we have here that your insurance approves or whatever. And Mm -hmm. I was like, uh, did my research. Don't want tubes, obviously. Had the Omnipod for like five to seven months. I forget exactly how long it was, but we had it for a long time without using it. And I look back and I'm kind of grateful that I didn't use it for a long time because I learned a lot about how the insulin affects the body. But also that thing really helps you fucking sleep. So I regret not putting it on sooner for that reason. Every time I go into the endo, which has been a few times now, they're like, oh, so you made this change. They're very cool with it. They're like, awesome. He looks like he's doing good. Do you have any questions? And I'm like, no. Do you need any prescriptions? You know, that's it. Like... And it's, I did not think I would be there when that ton of bricks fell on me that day. <laughs> Does that give you a feeling of accomplishment? A little bit, a little bit of, I'm not there yet. Cause 
you know, standard deviations, not great. He's, it's like, I think in the thirties or forties, mm-hmm. my goal is to be between five, five and five, seven. So people I talked to were like, Oh, that's, you're, you're killing yourself doing that. I'm like, ah, but I'm saving him. So I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, hmm? I think you're doing a really good job with this. And, you know, I think that it's not easy to learn. You learned it very quickly. You know, standard deviation, you'll, that'll come along, you know? Yeah. Well, that's, I already know why that's happening because he's a toddler. Sometimes we don't pre bowl this. You know, I, I know why it's happening. Right. It's, but you're able to manage a spike back down without causing a low. Yeah. That's a lot. Sometimes there's a low, but. Yeah, but that's a lot, man. You've, you've, you've come a long way in a short time. I know. I just can't wait for him to like be a little bit more like the day he comes to me like when you said Arden was like is there anything I can do that can help and you were like stop eating cereal if he does that I'm gonna ball my eyes out like why because it's it'll be the day that he's like hey you know it's I'm trying to do everything without I'm trying to let him be a kid right now you know like I don't want him to think about his diabetes although he's very very possessive of his diabetes we were thinking about checking his sister's blood sugar the other day (laughs) And he goes, no, no, this is my blood sugars. No, he wouldn't let us check her sugars. Stop he's giving like, that dirty little is... kid my meter. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's he's very proud of it. Everywhere he goes, hi, I'm, you know, and then he's. Oh, that's excellent. Says, I, he, hi, I'm my name and I have diabetes. Yeah. It's like, yeah, so you do, buddy. That's wonderful. It, it, I mean, listen, that's wonderful. I can't let you off the hook for not giving yourself credit for it yet. Like, what do you, you, what do you have to get to, to give yourself credit? Like you came a really long way in a difficult thing in a short amount of time. Uh, I don't know. I'll, when I quit seeing two hundreds. Yeah. All right. Well, good luck. He's got diabetes. <laughs> You're going to see that sometimes. You know what I mean? I, <laughs> yeah, I know. But when I quit seeing it on a daily basis okay. or on a, on a meal to meal basis, could I get you to give yourself credit for how far you've come so far? Hundred percent. I'm doing great. Yeah, I really think you are. Yeah, I nearly yeah. lost it on the Walmart lady the other day though, because she was like, I, "He goes, I am, and I have diabetes." And she goes, "My husband has that." I'm so so sorry that you're dealing with. And I was like, "Are you? Can you not be negative right now?" Ah, uh, she's being nice. You, <laughs> this kid just is very happy, and you're coming down on like, stop it. Did you want him to high? Did you want her to high five him? You wanted to be like, heck yeah. Diabetes? Yeah, you do. Up top, baby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, which she probably could have. That might have been Read nice. Read the kid's energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, in fairness, you hadn't had a beer in an hour and a half, so you might have been a little touchy. No. No, I'm just teasing. That's true. I always go shopping before that, you know? <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, we're not drinking and driving with the kids, right? Absolutely not. Not okay. even without the kids <laughs> not even without the kids I, I don't even do that on my own time baby well good for you come on i i gotta be a little responsible well there's you know there's gonna be a a, a modicum of people listening to this that are like you know you didn't treat this very seriously scott and stuff like that but i i'll listen i'm gonna tell you this i think we're treating Shaking, it for, i love you scott i don't care <laughs> oh i i thank you i i think we're treating it very seriously i think that this yeah. is an honest conversation about how a person in your situation feels and lives and, you know, to sit around and pretend otherwise is... And I just think there's probably somebody out there who's... Somebody. Gonna, like... <laughs> As somebody. I think every third person is like, yeah, I, I am, tell you what, if that person yeah. is out there and you want to reach out to Scott, who can then reach out to me, that's fine. I'll, I'm down. <laughs> okay. Hey, listen, what, what do you got to put me... What am I, your secretary? What just happened you, there? You'd be a middleman in this situation. You know, I don't want every, <laughs> But if somebody's going through that and you know i don't want everybody to know my info but i'll give somebody like that i'd, I'd hook up with them and be like, right. let's do this together so basically i'm running like a day drinker tinder or you're now. a pimp now yeah yeah I just thought about yeah. It. you're a pimp yeah now. so you guys can all find each other and find out where your beer sales are or whatever like yeah, you know what i mean no, let's yeah. not do that yeah, yeah how am i involved i got a business already i don't need that i'm just kidding <laughs> but honestly like i find these conversations to be the most valuable like because Yep. We, you know, somebody can come on here and say like what you're supposed to say. I think somebody might be in my situation and not even know that they're like, Oh, are you kidding? You have any people are like, problem. wait, you can't drink a beer every two hours. Why not? You, you know, like that's, I like to drink it. It's refreshing or yeah. it is, <laughs> but, but it, <laughs> that didn't help now. Um, <laughs> but like, you know, you can see it after talking to you, like you can see the pattern of events, right? Like you grow up in a weird household 
there's the addictive nature with your mom, you know, even though she wasn't around you very long, it, you know, it either rubs it's off like when, on, when trauma happens, it's almost impossible to, to like, not to escape it. Yeah. But it rubs off on you and or it's genetic to some level, like we're a mixture of the two, whatever, you know, by the time you're 18, you're smoking weed, then you get put into a weird circumstance where you're having to like help a, a closeted gay man get dressed <laughs> who's got Parkinson's and then you have like just the anxiety and stress of that is already yep. too, too much for a young person. Then there's the weird thing that happens, which it ramps it up. I wouldn't start drinking right there. So like, I like, but I'm not, I don't have that kind that's of, a, where the mix it, that, that's the difference, right? Like, right. But you're exactly. just like, let's go. Like I got a lot of weirdness going on here. Yeah, a lot I of was pressure. 20 years old. And I was like, my mom's an alcoholic, but I can do this. Like, I'm going to show her that it's easy. Do you really thought well, that? Not. Like I can, like, I can do this responsibly. hundred percent. Yeah. Not if you're, I guess, not if you've got alcohol or something like that. There's Cannot no way to do happen, that. Yeah, yeah, you're not doing that. And then, the, you know, I, I I, do really good. Like, I've had almost a year sober at times. But this disease, like, once it happens, it's like, there's almost like, it almost creates more traumas that you are you don't realize are happening. Hmm. Like, right, right after his diagnosis, he didn't have a solid stool for three or four months. So we were constantly changing shitty sheets and, like, just... He had shit blowouts three times a day. Like it, he had what's called toddler's diarrhea, according to the p- pediatrician. Okay. And then he started having night terrors. And it's like, when is this going to end? Mm, yeah. That's not fun. Yeah. And well, then that pushes on you. And then you kind of fall into your stuff then. Yeah. Night yeah. terrors is the worst. Like there's nothing worse than your kid being like almost, it seems like he's conscious, but he's freaking out like monsters are trying to grab him and you're like uh He's probably having his own response to what's going on what, what had been happening yeah. to him, you know well but now the thing is is that if you look back at your own story and then look at where you are now you have a finite amount of time right here to stop this from being your kid's story that's the yeah. thing <laughs> that that i mean that's where you're at honestly right yeah so i mean i think you got to do something well, you know, I think my mom's method of uh, scaring uh, of she's she's doing the scare tactic. I think that's what she's trying to do. She's like, this is where you're going to end up if you keep going. You think your mom is smoking that's crack a, to try to help you? Yeah, it's a joke. <laughs> that's but, optimistic. Yeah. <laughs> I'll show the kids what they don't want to be. Yep. Yeah, that didn't work for you guys. Like, you know how some people say, so, like, so I should probably not try to take that tactic with my. Kids. Yeah, I don't think it's a. I mean, it's a proven loser, is what I'm saying here, uh, as far as a tactic goes. <laughs> yeah, is, isn't it funny? Some people see a behavior and they go towards it, and some people see a behavior and they run away from it. You are uh, yeah. going. You're going towards it. I went away from it, and then I was like, "Then you're like, yeah, I'll go back. It's fine. I can." <laughs> It looks, I can manage this. I'm going to be better than them. Yeah. (laughs) Wrong. What would be a good replacement for the beer? I don't want you getting all fat. Having more stuff to clean because I like to clean. clean. (laughs) That's a little type A, the cleaning thing. I'm a little, I'm I'm a little, a little bit type A. Yeah, that happened a little bit. I mean, I just think, I think you got to. My wife thinks I'm OCD, but my therapist says I'm not. So you have a therapist? I don't. Oh, that's another thing I was going to bring up. I got, we got one. Uh, shortly after diagnosis and our insurance at the time only covered like four free sessions yeah. per person. So I was like, oh, I can go like every three months or something. And I got like three of them out of the way real quick because I didn't realize that at the time. And I was like, well, I'll save my last one now that I know that's the case. And now we're on, we got a better insurance plan. So we're both going back. Good. Well, that's a good yeah, idea. That's what, that's my next plan is. <laughs> can I make a suggestion? Therapy. Don't make yeah. a plan. Just get off the call with me and then call the therapist and make an appointment. I don't think you need a plan. You're not the A team. You know what I mean? Well, I, yeah, I'm waiting on uh, some referrals at the moment. Okay. Yeah. Get, but go towards it as fast as you can. Yeah. 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 The well, A-team. I'm not going to, I'm not going to sit on it. My wife is in charge right now. She's the one who's handling that. So mm-hmm. it, I'm probably going to have an appointment next week. Yeah. You know, excellent. <laughs> oh, that's great. I, 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 I love that for you. I love that. Yeah, I love she the looked idea. In, she looked into it after our insurance rolled over and she goes, it looks like we just have a little bit of a copay now for therapy and it's not that bad. And I was like, okay. And she goes, I'm going to reach out and she's, yeah, she's, she's a badass. Good. That's wonderful. 
Uh, I mean, it sounds like she really cares and she's trying to get everybody, you know, I mean, since she's stuck with you, she would rather you probably be okay. I'm yeah, guessing. She ain't kill me yet. Yeah. <laughs> I don't sleep. I think maybe when Matt, when, maybe when uh, little man can take care of himself, she might. But <laughs> think she's just biding her time. She'll smother you with a pillow. Once those kids, she's just letting me do my job now. For she's like, one day I'm gonna. She gonna teach yeah. one of them the vacuum and the other one to cook, and then you're done. <laughs> yeah, she, she probably got plans. <laughs> oh, I would imagine probably like drawn out like that uh, in mall rats, like blueprints and everything. <laughs> There's a reference I knew you were gonna get. Um, nope, I did. <laughs> and then bickety bam. <laughs> I get all your older references because I was like, my, my grandma was my main influence in my life after my, my mom peaced out. My grandma would take care of us when my dad worked. So she, I would watch a lot of old shows. So <laughs> I get all the references. That's lovely. Oh, good. And she, and she sounded lonely. So she had time for you guys. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if she was lonely. Well, bored, maybe, at the very you least. We won't get into that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, before we started recording, we were like, you were like, I don't think I should use my name. I'm going to say some stuff probably that, you know, maybe I don't want to be attached to. I wasn't to. sure it was going to come out, but. But did it actually come out or is there other stuff? Oh, I'm sure there. I mean, there's there's definitely more. That's a world that is so interesting where you said all that crazy stuff and you're like, there's more. Yeah, but when you think I, you don't, you don't have to tell me what all the stuff is. People are like, "Shut up and let them talk." But, um, but like, can you see how those things led you to where you are? Oh yeah, those things and the influences that those things like, uh, or like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can see where they led me. It's mental illness and addiction that kind of pushed your life in this direction. Do you think that yeah. happened to your mom as well? Did she have that going on in in her parenting? I don't know because I don't know enough about like, like her parents helped raise me more than she did, mm -hmm. which is kind of weird. I know more about them than I actually do about her, but they were not willing. They never talked about They don't share about uh, that stuff. Yeah. Okay. Like about what was happening. How does your mom support herself? She's 60 years oldish and doesn't work and has a crack Welfare. habit. Welfare pays for crack? I don't. She's living with some, some guy who's, old like she is and i think he might have some like veterans assistance or something as well and like she i don't know i really i really don't because i haven't talked to her in so long but these are just assumptions that i'm making hey, listen let me say this just pull yourself together just so that one day you don't live with some old guy who has veterans assistance like oh, you know what I mean? Happen. yeah well you say never but <laughs> i mean i don't know what's gonna happen to you you don't either like, like, you're you know, not like, wrong. Yeah, yeah. So I'm saying, like, don't put yourself. There could be a clown on the other side. There of that could door. be a clown on the other side of that door, and that clown might be a veteran who's like, "Hey, if you sit here and do this, I'll pay the bills." And you're like, "Oh, okay. I guess I'm doing it." But seriously, like, like, give yourself some agency. Like, make you know, yeah. make decisions that allow you to make decisions. Is yeah, kind of I think I therapy think is going to help a lot. Um, yeah. I've done it before. It's been a long time since I've been. When I got to go for those three sessions, the first one I really liked but then we found out that she was also going to see my wife and so I was like well I'll just go to a different person and I did not like the second guy so I'm going to my wife's going to set up something I think she's like you need to see a female I don't think you can be honest with a man and I was like oh, I don't know I just think men are more like just do this and do that and you know I want to cry sometimes stoic and stuff like that and yeah, yeah, I don't need. I don't want that. I yeah. want to cry. Yeah, it sounds like you need a. a I mean, who's like the guy who had all the feels? Because those episodes, oof. Yeah, yeah, I know. There, there's a lot of, it's a lot of crying in Josh's episodes. <laughs> but yeah, you need a mother figure to like open up to. But I don't think this is like, like any deep thinking on my yeah. part, right? Oh no, no, yeah, you already no, have, have no. You already my have mom, a dad. <laughs> my wife has made it very clear. I have mommy issues. Yeah. No, I, mean, I was pretty aware of it too before, but <laughs> <laughs> I just, I'd like to be, I would honestly, I'd like to see you be able to just go out without having to smoke. Like, I think that'd be a big deal for you. Mm. You know, that, that scares you. No, doesn't no? scare me at all. Okay. I think that'd be a big deal. It just for doesn't you. seem appealing. Oh, uh, listen, I'll make you a short list of things in life that aren't appealing. Yeah, but I, I like you not drinking the beer and going out once in a while straight. And I bet you that moves you in the right direction. 
Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I was, I'm going to get there. I'm not, I'm, I ain't too worried about it. Well, I hope you check back in with me in a year and you tell me a story about how this all worked out or you can come back on and tell me how to cook rock cocaine, whichever uh, ends up being <laughs> your path. So. Well, probably not. It'll be growing mushrooms or something. Oh yeah. Well, keep it more on the hippie level. Yeah. Uppers uh, aren't my thing. <laughs> <laughs> Why is cocaine so prevalent now? I don't know, but it is. I di- I didn't. I've done it. I've done crack. I don't like it. I ju- they're not my thing. I've I've done everything but heroin and meth. I'm saving those for when I die. You smoke the crack or you shoot it. I smoked it. I've never shot anything. Look I'm not you. fancy. Okay, believe it or not, before all this happened, I was I had a needle phobia. <laughs> I know. I think I, it might have had something to do with you trying pan- to push a plunger into my friend's arm. Oh, I thought for sure. Like when you said that, you were going to be like, "That's why I had to get my kid an Omnipod." Omnipod dot com <laughs> forward slash juice box. When you have a needle, definitely. Phobia. Although you should, Omnipod is the best. Thank you. I don't know if you're selling for me right now. They're probably like, "Oh, I could sell for you all day." I yeah. like all your products. So you don't, you don't think that the company right now is like, "Not this guy." <laughs> <laughs> Somebody else, not them. All right, we'll throw Dex under the bus too. You don't, you don't think the companies are like, oh yeah, we want to be the, um, we definitely want to be the preferred product of uh, day drinking weed smokers. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, yeah. you know what? You might want to be the preferred. Product you might want to of- work out to, uh, you might want to reach out to uh, Better Health on this one. <laughs> better Help, yeah. Oh, by the way, I do have a Better Help link. BetterHelp dot com slash Juicebox if you want to get twenty <laughs> percent off your first, uh, is it first month of therapy? I think it is. Yep. It's such a weird thing having a podcast. Like, I like, bet it is. like when you started, I, I do- wish I had the ability. Like, I don't know. I don't have the the social skills that you do, but it it, it's a, it would be a convenient way to work from home. I feel like <laughs> it actually is a very convenient way to work from home. You may, but if you can't come up with gems like um, if it's hard, the angle's easy, then you're not going to be able to do this because that's really no. that's next level stuff. I'm, um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm not I'm not there. That's right. why I listen and don't. You know? I'm a modern day Henny Youngman over here. So, um, but there's I'll a, never be on this podcast. And I heard an after dark, and I was like, maybe one. <laughs> Wait, what is that? Say that again. I said I was I listened to a lot of the episodes. I started from number one, and I was like, I could never be on this podcast. Like, dude's too awesome. Like, he just knows so much. Like, I'd feel like an idiot. And then the first after dark came on, and I was like, I could totally be. On I could this. do one of these. Yeah, yeah, I swear to God, this would I would do more of these, but. They're not as popular as you would think they are. The people who love the After Darks really love them, but they get skipped a little bit by like 15% of the audience. Yeah, that's annoying because yeah. there's a lot of valuable information in there for, and I don't think people even realize it. I think so too, actually. But, you know, everybody doesn't love everything. So that's fine. So that's I why get it. I tried I've to literally a- skipped one of your episodes and it's just because I couldn't stand the girl's voice. I'm not going to say which one it was because I don't want to offend anybody. Wait, but, but you'll tell me when we stop the recording? Oh, yeah. Okay, thank you. But you got to give me some sort of gem that other other listeners aren't going to get for six months. I mean, listen, if I had chips, I'd send you one for I'm sure. Just yeah, yeah, like, like you know what I mean. Like, um, I'm I, just kidding. I thought about that before, by the way, giving out prizes for listening to the entire podcast because people come to me sometimes. They're like, I just finished the whole podcast, and I'm like, wait, yeah. what? Like, I that's wonderful. Like, first of all, I can't tell you how nice that feels, but you know, to me. But the other side of it is like, I've I've like I've told my kids that, and they're like, oh. That's too much of you. And I'm like, you think? <laughs> I can't give you too much credit because I'm the kind of person that would have figured this out, but I would not have figured it out in a month. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it, the podcast actually helped you like draw it all together that quickly. Oh, it sped it up like crazy. I, in the first month I was like, I don't, I don't, I've, I've listened to all the management episodes. I'm literally listening to it for therapy at this point. I know what I'm doing. I'm just, it's therapy at this point for me. <laughs> I hear that from a lot of people actually uh, about yeah. just listening for the comfort and everything, but it hey, made it so quick. Let me put this out here to other people who are like, I can't figure out diabetes. This guy did. <laughs> yep, <laughs> He's a little drunk and high almost <laughs> constantly. And he's afraid to meet a person at a walking park. And he got this it worked out pretty good. <laughs> this is true. And he smoked crack before. And 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 he's got it figured out. I want to know what your excuse is. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, <laughs> Can I get a review that says no, nah, I don't know. I would love I would love a review that said I've smoked crack and even I understand the diabetes information in this podcast. <laughs> I think that, 
think that would be my favorite review. Don't do that, by the way. I'm not going to. But, I could. Can you, can you, but I think that would be my favorite review. Better than the one who said, I love the podcast. It's so helpful, but I don't like the guy. <laughs> that was- I got to admit, I think the first couple episodes, I was like, I your sarcasm took a little while to get used to. Yeah, that could probably be off-putting if you don't know I'm just sarcastic. not as I'm pretty sarcastic, but I'm not as sarcastic. So I was just a little bit like, ah. And I got used to it pretty quick, though. Yeah. Now, I've got an East Coast sarcasm that's uh, it's very <laughs> finely refined. It's not it's not for the faint of heart. And especially, yeah. you know, those people in the West Coast, they can't. Like, although I'm, I almost said me. I don't like to equate myself to the podcast. The podcast is really popular in California. But anyway, I love you guys. I, I love everybody. I can't believe how many people. I can't believe that if I pulled up a list of where this podcast was heard, that it includes 48 different countries. It's insane. Oh, I know. Yeah. I, I, I was like, I, one of your episodes, you go into... Uh, in the end, like how many people in the countries are, and I'm just like astonished. Yeah. Oh no, I am too. Just like, oh, so you're, you're really great with accents. Where do you think I'm from? Oh, why well, we don't want to say though. Oh no, but you, I don't, I don't think you're going to guess where I'm actually, where I was born. Oh, well, there's a little like Canadian mi- Minnesota in some of the things you say. And Seriously? I'll, yeah. Just a tiny little my bit. That's stepmom. And, and I hear I'm from way far away from me. Hold on. And I hear a little bit of Seattle too. Nope. No. Where, where do you want to tell me if we can bleep it out? It's a huge state. So it doesn't matter. It's Texas. Oh, you're from Texas. Yeah. Oh, that's how you found Florida. So easy. It was, it was, it was, right, it was right there. I think but my Southern has left me, I guess. There's no Southern. I get a little bit of like almost Canadian once in a while, but your stepmom's got that vibe. Yeah, yeah she's, picked, she's up there in the north. I think you picked it up a little bit from her, maybe. I think so. Yeah, the attitude was more like Oregon. So that's why I was guessing like Washington, uh, Oregon. I'm, up there. I'm very hippie, I guess I would say. So that makes sense. Yeah, no, I mean, that's fair. I've seen your mustache. Yeah. <laughs> you have to buy products for that or does it? No, no, that's, that's, that's all natural. natural. Well, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> Seriously, that's a very masculine mustache. I, I, that's a, that's a summertime thing. And in the winter I have, I let it grow. I have to tell you something. If that mustache is natural like that, and that bushiness, I see what your grandfather was reaching for. <laughs> Let's leave it at that. Go ahead and find another podcast. that will make fun of a man for being hit on by his grandfather. You're not going to find it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dementia. You know, you got to give him a little bit of listen. He probably looked like a boy he knew one day. You know what I mean? <laughs> He didn't know who I, I don't think he, uh, yeah, he, probably, he probably, I don't probably know. Didn't know who you he are. said my name, so. <laughs> <laughs> my God. I, yeah, go to therapy. Um, <laughs> I appreciate you doing this. My one letdown here is that we were going to do this one, like, not, like, a bleeped and not bleeped version of it. And you really didn't curse that much. You know, I think it's, I'm, you know, I was raised by my grandma. I don't <laughs> curse naturally a lot, but, like, I do. I, if I'm like, like if I'm talking about you, like and what you done for me, and I say I love you, yeah, it doesn't. That's not working for me. I have to say like I fucking love you. Wow. Like I cannot leave the f out in a situation like that. I hear. But in most of the time, I tried. You know, I mean, my grandma's probably watching me. I don't. Mm-hmm. I'm not religious, but I still feel that way. So I still think that some, lady's <laughs> looking down on you. Her her energy is out there. I got gotcha. And I don't want. I don't. Yeah. You don't want her to hear you saying motherfucker or something like that. Eh, not all the time. What's your only line? If it, only if it means something. What's it's your gotta, line? It's got to mean something. What what word would you not say? Oh, I don't have a line. My favorite word is cunt. Oh, okay. That's, I, I didn't know you were going right there, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> all, right. all right. Now we're stopping. Before you get me to say my favorite curse words and then people stop listening to the podcast. You're like, I used to like that guy, but he, <laughs> he said his favorite curse word and it made me very uncomfortable. <laughs> all right, man. You were great, Wilford. Um, I think you did the real Wilford <laughs> Brimley a real service here. What a what an homage! And, Anybody uh, who's offended by that, yeah, get over it. Also, Wilford Brimley had a hell of a mustache. He did. He did. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm going with it. Damn. All right. Well, then you're the walrus. Cuckoo could show. What are we going to call this one? I mean, it's an after dark, but is it after dark? Don't touch me, Grandpa. <laughs> don't touch me, Grandpa. I don't think we can do that. <laughs> All right, we're gonna have to think about this. Maybe I'll just go with I am the walrus. <laughs> that would work all right man it's good to talk I'll to you i really talk to you man i really appreciate you doing this sincerely i appreciate you man take care thank you hold on one second good sir 
huge thanks to a longtime sponsor, Touched by Type 1. Please check them out on Facebook, Instagram, and at touchedbytype1.org. If you're looking to support an organization that's supporting people with type 1 diabetes, check out Touched by Type 1. Today's episode of the Juice Box Podcast is sponsored by Dexcom, makers of the Dexcom G7 and G6 continuous glucose monitoring systems. Dexcom.com slash juice box. Jalen is an incredible example of what so many experience living with diabetes. You show up for yourself and others every day, never letting diabetes define you. And that is what the Medtronic Champion community is all about. Each of us is strong and together we're even stronger. To hear more stories from the Medtronic Champion community or to share your own story, visit MedtronicDiabetes.com slash juicebox and look out online for the hashtag Medtronic Champion. If you're not already subscribed or following in your favorite audio app, please take the time now to do that. It really helps the show. And get those automatic downloads set up so you never miss an episode. Thank you so much for listening. I'll be back very soon with another episode of the Juice Box Podcast. The episode you just heard was professionally edited by Wrong Way Recording. WrongWayRecording.com.